We open on the Ural Mountains as the Yagal hunt the mightiest of all the beasts, woolly mammoths. Things are changing. Mammoths have been showing up later and later each season, and that's if they came at all. Famine is gripping the village, and only one amongst them, who they refer to as Old Mother, could speak to the spirits and ask for the father's wisdom to save the Yagal. She tries to reach him, but they just keep leaving her on reading. Finally, one day, they send a sign, an ominous sign. But maybe she wasn't specific on what kind of sign she wanted. A young Dali watches as villagers bring a girl they found in the mountains to Mother. Old Mother performs her ritual, asking where the girl came from and discovers the father sent her. She places her hands on the girl's cheeks and sees everything that happened. Her village under attack, people dying. She's eventually flung across the room all while Dali watches. She tells her people that the end is near. The four-legged demon is coming on the last hunt. She tells them that a warrior will rise and save him, and the girl will be his bride. They'll be the future of the Yagal and end hunger and strife. Well, she's only a child, so no pressure, right? The girl, Evelette, looks to the side and sees Dali staring. Of all the Yagal, only one did not believe the old mother's prophecy, Dali's father. That night he leaves, telling only one person, Tick Tick, why, but swearing he never reveals the truth. Life for Dali gets rough as people start casting him out because his father abandoned his people. Tick Tick defends him, but kids are cruel, no matter what millennia it is. Isolated, he connects with Evelyn. The two pretty much fall in love immediately thanks to their outcast status. This may be the birth year of cliches. Many years pass and the last hunt is approaching. Dali and Baku sit and overlook the valley. Evelette interrupts their conversation and gives Baku some food before talking to Dali on the side. She tells him they must run away together. If the prophecy comes true, their love is doomed, as she'll be the one who wields the white spear. Dali tells her he must be the one to fulfill the prophecy and kill the beast. Baku hears the noise of the mammoths. He calls for Dali and Evelette to come and look and they see a bunch of them walking into the valley. Tick Tick tells the tribe the following morning that he'll not be the one to kill the mammoth. Instead, it'll be one of the young warriors chosen by the spear. Ka Ren grabs the spear, and they all head out into the valley, crawling along the floor, hiding from the Manak. Eventually, they begin chasing him, but Dali, wanting to win for Evelet, keeps running closer to the herd of mammoths. Before we go on, like the video, smash the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to get that full day of good luck. Karen calls out for him to stop but ignores him. It soon becomes clear that Dali went too far. Now surrounded by beasts, he jumps to the side, falling to the ground. He's nearly trampled but manages to survive. The beasts move through the valley towards a small opening where the Yagal are ready to trap the last beast. The beast is trapped. Everyone tells Karen to hurry and finish the job. But the moment he throws the spear, things become clear. This isn't going to end well. The beast deflects the attempt and begins forcefully breaking away. Everyone jumps on the net and is dragged by this beast, Tick Tick realizing that the beast is too strong. He tells Karen and Dali to let go, and while Karen immediately does so, Dali is stuck. The beast drags him up the hill until he manages to get free. He's not done yet, though. He wants revenge. Cavemen clearly don't know the lesson, don't play with your food. The bull tries to attack. Dali sees a spear in an opportunity. He takes his chance and gets the beast. Victory, right? Wrong. The beast continues its unrelenting attacks before this caveman comes up with a plan. He wedges a spear into the rocks and makes the beast attack him. The beast impaling himself in the process. Now Tick Tick sees this, but he's the only one, as everyone else arriving believed the Lee killed the beast single-handedly. They drag him out from underneath the beast and celebrate his achievement. Now that he's fulfilled the prophecy, he and Evelette can be together without concern. As the celebrations rage on, Tick Tick refuses to celebrate with him, and the Lee knows why. He confronts his father figure and asks what to do not to lose Evelette due to a lie. Evelette later finds the Lee sitting alone. He tells her he gave her the spear back because of the lie. She's hurt when it becomes clear he's giving up on her. With the snowfall, the four-legged demons arrive in the Yagal's village. The mother wakes up, 
and walks out and sees them approaching. They begin killing and capturing the Yagal, and Ali wakes up to see it all happening from a distance. Baku hides in the hut as his mother's killed before his eyes. As Dali's about to get to the others to help, Tick Tick stops him and says they can't be helped. The leaders of the four legged demons take Evelet as Dali watches, desperate to help but restrained by Tick Tick. So in the aftermath, Dali prepares to leave but is met with resistance from the others, especially Ka Ren, who thinks he's foolish for attempting to traverse the Great Mountains alone. Finally, Tick Tick tells him that he'll go too. After Baku says he's going, his old mother stops him and tells Ka Ren to go with him. So three cave dudes start walking after some goodbyes, and Baku follows them. They rest that night, and in the morning, Tick Tick spots Baku and initially tells him to go home. Dali says to let him stay, but Tick Tick argues he'll only slow them down. But of course, that's not what happens. He's the youngest, which means he's faster than all of them, which annoys Tick Tick, who struggles up the mountain. So at the top, they come across a fire just recently put out. Baku finds a piece of the necklace Dali made for, like a breadcrumb leading him to her. They continue through rough, snowy weather, freezing and really cold. Evelette and the other prisoners arrive at her old village, where she's instantly reminded of the day she first became an orphan because of the four-legged demon. Meanwhile, the trail's gone cold, in more ways than one, for Dali and his cave crew. They feel frustrated, unsure of where to go next. So Evelet and the prisoners are woken up to continue on moving. A demon goo notices the necklace pieces Evelet's leaving behind. The leader tells her to drop it, but she doesn't, and he whips her hands repeatedly until she relents. The Lee finds the bloody necklace on the ground. They all look to the forest where noise makes them travel deep within, hoping to find their people. Well, they find them, but Tick Tick tells them that they can't be freed that night in a place like this, Instead, they must keep watch and move with the enemy. When Dali takes his turn, Ka Ren tells him to be patient. He watches over them that night, but his attention is grabbed in the morning when the four-legged demon's horses start making a noise. One of the demons is also curious about it and sees Evelette sleeping near him. Assuming it's her, he starts getting up in her face before Dali knocks him out. He helps her escape, but the leader quickly realizes Evelette's gone. Tick Tick, Ka Ren, and Baku lie in the bushes, prepared to fight. As Dali and Evelet start freeing their people, the others return and round them all up. Everyone tries to run from the demons. During their escape efforts, Ka Ren is captured. They hide amongst the grass, but quickly realize a beast far worse than the mammoths is amongst them. Oh yeah, dinosaurs. 10,000 BC, the OG Jurassic Park. The demons are attacked intensely before the Yagal are faced with any challenges. They scatter, with one focusing on Tick Tick and two chasing Evelet and Dali. Baku tells them to get to the tree, which they do, but so do the whatever dinosaurs these are. They're kind of looking like oversized dodos. Okay, so the dodo starts climbing the tree to get to Baku. The other two are trying to get into the tree. Baku struggles to get away and jumps for a branch, which snaps and, ah, uh, even in 10,000 BC. We had to have a joke about it hurting your bits. Ah, the humor's so primitive. Dali gets the dodo's attention and runs away from the tree. He climbs up a ledge and manages to kill one dodo. The others come up from behind. He jumps, is almost eaten, and then runs through the bamboo trees and is eventually trapped. The dodo eats at his bamboo cage and this guy comes up with a plan. He lifts the sharp bamboo and lets the dodo impale itself right through the mouth. This trick is one day going to kill him. Anyways. Evelet, Baku, and Karan are captured. Dali watches as they're taken away before going in search of Tick Tick. He finds him, dying. So, overall, not a successful day. Dali takes his body on a gurney and drags him along the way. He tries to nurse him back to health, and while hunting for food, he falls into a trap. Dali wakes up to find vultures and a saber tooth with him down in the hole. After trying to escape, he decides to kill the saber tooth because if not, why not? However, he ends up not being able to, and instead helps the Sabretooth get free. Initially, it looks like he's about to become a snack, but the Saber just leaves him be, allowing him to get out on his own. He returns in the morning to find Tick Tick up and looking much better than before. Tick Tick tells him that the four-legged demons attacked a village while he was away. They go and inspect and find food, so starving, they're feasting, but are soon surrounded by angry villagers. 
They're about ready to attack, but the Saber comes to Dali's rescue, even though it looked like he was about to eat Dali for a hot second. This act of the Saber amazes the villagers and Tick Tick. Seemingly with some street cred, they're both invited to feast with the villagers. They all stare as they eat. Dali eats a chili and begins freaking out. They celebrate before it's revealed that they speak the Yagal's language because of Dali's father. They explain he was taken by evil spirits, the Mountain of the Gods. Now they're told they'll take Dali with them there due to a prophecy that tells of a warrior who speaks the saber tooth, setting them free. So that night, Tick Tick tells him that his father never ran away. He left to save the Yagal. Dali's hurt that all this time he didn't know the truth. But Tick Tick explains his father wanted nobody to follow him on this journey. So the next morning they leave to hunt down this four-legged demon to free all their people. Baku makes friends with the chief's son before he ends up angering one of the demons. Causing quite a scene, the leader tells the demon to relent. And he's not so happy with the leader for this demand. He even vaguely threatens his life. Meanwhile, the lead Tick Tick and the villagers meet with the other tribes. They forge ahead, never resting. As they approach the demons, the leader starts trying to get everyone to pick up the pace, knowing they're outnumbered. As Dali and the others approach, another tribe tells them that the birds have arrived. Dali runs, and over the dunes, he sees them, boats on the water carrying his friends away. He calls out for Evelette, who sees them, and tells the others. They all watch as the tribes appear. They realize they can't chase after the boats, so they need a plan. And they keep watching as they're taken away. As the sun begins to set, they come up with a plan to follow along the river to reach the head of the snake. Tick Tick wants a shorter way, but they're advised against traveling through the desert due to its treacherous conditions. So on the boats, Evelyn is told by the leader of the demons that she must forget about Dali, because nobody survives the desert. He puts a blanket over her, showing her a strange sense of kindness that isn't lost on his fellow demon. While everyone's resting, Dali makes a great discovery. The stars will guide him out of the desert into the head of the snake. He runs to tell the others and they get moving. They arrive at the head of the snake, and before him lies impressive structures being built by slaves in the heart of the desert along the river. Baku sees the golden tip of the pyramid and feels it before being whipped. He runs away and sees Evelyn, but when he attempts to speak to her, she silences him in fear of what the guards will do. Baku and Karen watch the brutal treatment of both people and the mammoths, horrified by the scene. Someone important arrives and everyone goes to the ground. The Almighty is unpleased by the spread of their work, and so he demands a sacrifice. A Yagal is taken and thrown off, killed on impact. So that night, Dali and Nakudu go and tell their people of their plan. They're quickly met with resistance, as some slaves believe they're not powerful enough to bring down the gods. Once Nakudu tells them of Dali's powers, they listen closely. They introduce them to the blind man, who has intimate knowledge of the gods. The man tells Dali that only the man with the mark of the hunter can defeat a god. And as it's discovered that something's wrong, the guards flood the cells. And as Dali starts to leave, he notices something that makes him question the old man. He learns his father saved the old man but is now dead. He and Nakudu escape running through the desert to the others but are followed. And when Dali returns, they see the guards that followed him. So Tick Tick fights him and kills two of them. He turns his back, and one of the guards stabs him, fatally wounding him. He kills the guard as Dali comes to his side. He holds his mentor as he dies, and Tick Tick gives him the spear before giving his last breath. Evelette is with the leader of the four-legged demons, who has bought her and set her free. Hoping to make her his wife, she attempts to kill him. Just before she does so, guards come in and take her away for stealing from the kingdom. They take the knife from Evelette and notice marks on her hands. They run to the god and tell them of Evelet's marks, and they inspect the marks, which match a group of stars. Amazed, they tell the god who doesn't believe what they're hearing. After mourning the loss of his mentor, Dali goes and begins rallying the troops, a new sense of purpose taking over. He tells them that they'll go tomorrow and join their brothers and sister to convince them to fight and prepare for battle. The god inspects Evelyn and questions the validity of the claims before finding out about the hunter, Dali. He announces that the hunter is here. Dali and the others are deeply engaged in labor when he notices the bull amongst the other mammoths. 
and they begin getting to work. Baku and the others begin loosening the ropes on the bull's cart, and once that's done, they start attacking. An army of guards start charging at the slaves. Karen starts fighting them off, but is taken down quickly. Dali manages to get the bull angry, which rallies the rest of the mammoths to run, and they charge down the ramp, killing guards. Everyone's emboldened and begins fighting back. They grab their spears and begin destroying the pyramids, causing havoc and mayhem. Evelette is brought to the front as the gods plan to kill her, unless Dali leaves. So Nakudu tells Dali that they're saying if he leaves, he can take Evelette. And he's shocked when Dali tells him he accepts. His one condition is to take each Yagal with him. They accept. He asks about the others. And he's told they belong to the gods. And will stay forever doing their work. Dali refuses and instead kills the supposed god. And now realizing the truth, everyone fights back. The leader of the four-legged demons takes Evelyn. She stabs him in the side and they fall off the horse. And as she's running to Dali, the demon fires an arrow at her, getting her in the back. Dali kills the demon as the god's city and boats burn. Dali's holding her as she too dies in his arms. Now, lost, Dali walks away from Evelyn's body and collapses in front of a herd of mammoths. One looks back at him. And he runs back to Evelet, realizing that as the old mother takes her final breath back home, Evelet returns to him. They all return home, deeply changed by their journey. A new changed world before them, and a bright future ahead. 10,000 BC was released in 2008 by Warner Brothers Pictures. It starred Stephen Strait, Camilla Bell, and Cliff Curtis. If you were Dali, would you have taken on the responsibility of the spear? Tell me with the hashtag Cinema Recap in the comments.